Hello everyone. Today's Saint Inspiration teaches us that sometimes the faithful can actually feel the tangible presence of God's spiritual messengers. I have a special fondness for today's Orthodox Saint because him and I share the same birthday, December 1st, although he was born a bit earlier in time than me. His name is Saint Seraphim, the wonder worker of Sophia. He was born December 1st in 1881 and reposed or died in 1950. First, I will share a teaching quote of his and then an inspirational story from his life. Again, Saint Seraphim of Sophia reminds us that there is a spiritual world of God waiting to help us. It is alive now, just as I am talking to you at this very moment. So here is the saint's quote. He says, be careful in your relations with the baptized. Do not act cunning because their guardian angel who they received at baptism learns from your guardian angel about your ill sentiments to them and warns them. Now, that's food for thought. Honestly, most of the time I forget about my guardian angel who watches over me. What an important reminder. Saint Seraphim of Sophia's inspirational story also illustrates this parallel reality we often forget about. The reality of this is that our holy saints in Christ are absolutely alive right now. They even help us dur during any of our minor or even major transitions in life, like moving to a new place, finding the right spouse, or even cho choosing the best career for ourselves. In essence, these saints can and will help us to align ourselves with God's will for each of our lives. However, we need to remember to ask them for godly guidance. This beautiful story comes from the biography of Saint Seraphim of Sophia by Schemanon Seraphimna. I don't know if any of you listeners have actually seen a photo of this particular saint. If not, you really need to, because his countenance is quite striking. He looks like what I would imagine an Old Testament prophet would look like. Here is his inspirational story now for us on how he chose his life's work with the help of Saint Seraphim of Sarav, who, by the way, Many of you recognize the saint's name, Russian Saint Seraphim of Sarov. He was born 127 years before Saint Seraphim of Sophia's own birth year of 1881. Saint Seraphim of Sophia's birth name was Nikolai. He was named after Saint Nicholas of Myra. When Nikolai was in his fourth year at the academy, the inspector, Archimandrite Theophan, asked him, point blank, do you want to become a monk or not? Nikolai, out of humility, considered himself unworthy of the monastic life struggle, or podvig. He was tormented by this question since he did not know God's will for him. I mean, think about that. How many of us struggle with questions like this? So he wrote to Father John of Kronstadt to resolve the issue. But Father John did not reply to his letter, so he asked Elder Anatolius, the younger, of Optima. But the elder said that he was unable to give an answer to his question in absence. In other words, he'd have to see him in person. Elder Anatolius of Optima's letter really upset and grieved Nikolai even more. He had been unable to receive a direct answer to his question from anywhere, an answer that would indicate to him God's will for his life. So during this time of self-reflection, 
he happened to be reading a book. He was reading a book about the life of Saint Seraphim of Sarav. The book was lying open on a table in his room. Nikolai began to pace about his room during this time. He was in one of his pensive moods. His frame of mind was concerned and pensive, but suddenly the thought struck him. What little faith I have. Why, Saint Seraphim of Sarav is alive even today in heaven. He stands at the altar of the Holy Trinity. He can even now solve all problems and questions. If I approach him in prayer with, and with faith, he thought, I will go right now up to the table on which the book with the life of Saint Seraphim of Sarav lies. And I will approach the saint as he's living. I will fall down on my knees and I will ask him, I will beseech him to solve the question about what am I to do with my life, whether to marry and become a priest or to take monastic vows. And so that's just what Nikolai did. He made a full prostration, so he bowed down and he prayed. Then he opened the book. And remember, I mentioned earlier that this was a book he just happened to be reading at that time about St. Seraphim of Sarav. He opened that book and he began to read exactly where he randomly opened it. And this is what was written there on that particular page. In 1830, a novice from the Glinskoy Desert, extraordinarily wavering, in the question of what he should do with his life, of his particular calling, went to Sarav for the purpose of asking advice of Father Seraphim. Falling down at the Holy One's feet, he besought him and asked him that he might help him and resolve for him this torturing question about what to do with his life. Was it indeed the will of God for him and his brother Nikolai to go to a monastery? The saintly elder replied to the novice and simply said, save yourself and you will save your brother. So Nikolai paused and looked at these words again and decided to take these words of Saint Seraphim of Sarav's to be a direct divine revelation from God for him about the necessity to become a monastic something that was congruent with a deep desire in his own heart. So from that moment on, Nikolai began to think monasticism was not only his personal path, as testified to him by God, but he also believed it was a path for his own brother, too. You know, the spiritual confirmation of the help of St. Seraphim of Sarav goes one step further when it became time for this new monk we're speaking about today, Nikolai, to receive his new name as monk, the rector of the academy, Bishop Sergei, who was responsible for tonsuring the new monk, went to eat on the eve of the tonsure at the house of the academy's church warden, a certain merchant Rubikin, Rubikin's two young girls began pestering the rector about what name he was going to give the new monk. When they heard that the name was already chosen and was going to be Dosifi, they begged him with great persistence not to give him that name, but to give him another name, but to give him really the best name. So on his return home in the carriage, this particular bishop, Sergei, suddenly remembered that at the 1903 uncovering of the relics of Saint Seraphim of Sarav, he had made the following vow or promise to God's saint. If Saint Seraphim should make him rector of the Saint Petersburg Theological Academy, then he would place the first student to receive the tonsure under the name of Seraphim's he heavenly guardianship by giving him the name Seraphim. So, 
he decided to give Nikolai the name Seraphim in honor of this great saint of Sarah, this great Russian saint. So when at his tonsure, Nikolai suddenly heard the words, our brother Seraphim is shorn of the hair of his head. He felt surprise and amazement. It was filled with great love and thankfulness to St. Seraphim of Sarov. He thought, this saint not only revealed God's will to me from this book I was reading, that God's will was for me to become a monk, but it's also pleasing to him to take me under his blessed guardianship by giving me his name. Well, Everyone, this story reminds us that our holy saints hear us when we sincerely pray and talk to them about any of our life's needs. And let's not forget about our guardian angels either. Have a good day.